Okay. So, last time I was uh, Francis here again. Um, if you like my videos, please subscribe. Numbers are getting up there at seven. Please help me get up to 17. Well, it's just 10 more. Um, once I get to 17, I'll aim for 27. Um, so the battery ran out last time. Um, or oh, I think my file was over full, or something, one of the two. And the tape file, so it couldn't, the memory stick, so it couldn't carry on. Anyway, I will carry on where I left off. Uh, so I was going over how in chalk and hydrochloric acid are reacted, they, they produce CO2. Um, lots of mass of chalk, sorry, you get a loss of mass of chalk and um, you, you, you measure a difference in weight as this gets lighter, basically. Loss of CO2 is equal to the mass of loss of chalk, or the equal, is equal to the loss, the reduction in the mass of chalk, as well as the CO2. Sorry, as well as the H. <laughs> as CO2 is released, the mass of CO2 released is equal to the mass of these lost as they react. Okay, so I drew out the table and I plotted it. This is a very rough graph sketch. Um, it's not necessary to always plot um, scales on an axis, but you must always label the axis, okay, the axis. Um, and if you plot it carefully, you, you can't just draw a rough sketch, you can show the shape, so as time, as time progresses, the mass, excuse these crossings out, I decided it wasn't going to work drawing a scale on this paper without doing it properly, but it starts with 198 grams, and as time progresses, the mass drops. Okay, so it starts with 198, goes to 196, 195, 194, 193. Okay, and from about some point in the future, about here, the mass remains the constant because um, all the chalk has been used up. So the amount of CO2 um, being used. Um, the mass of CO2, there's no more chalk left, so the mass of um, the apparatus remains at a constant level. Okay, I'll repeat that. The mass drops from 198, 196, 195, 194, 193. From this point onwards, some point in time, the total mass of the apparatus reaches a minimum, but it doesn't get any lower because there's no more chalk to use up and no more HCL to use up. What's, what's happened, of course, is all the chalk's gone. All the chalk has been used up. You'll have H, you'll have hydrochloric acid left over, but there's no more chalk left, so no more CO2 is produced. So the mass of the whole jar, the beaker with the acid, remains at a constant level. Okay? In this case, 193.8 in the example. Um, you can use a graph like this to can be used to calculate the actual rate of reaction or the average rate from start to finish. That's the start, that's the finish. Or the average rate at any time points, say between those two, or between that one and that one, or between this one and that one, or between those two. So you might want to work out the rate during the beginning where it's very fast, or the rate at the very end where it's very slow, or even the rate when it's stopped, which is zero. The rate there is zero, or the rate somewhere in the middle. Okay? So you can work out the average rate or the rate from, from beginning to end. The difference was the rate from the start to the finish or the average rate over any particular two time points. Okay. Um, I will read that one for a moment. So, right. 
So, next, you can also measure the previous, in the previous example, we measured the change in mass over time. Or you can measure the change in volume over time. So again, you can use a, a flask. And I'm trying to draw this point more as it should be, which is a measuring. That's better. That's more like it won't have done. Okay, so you got again it's a rough sketch. This is a gas syringe. Should read it in capitals like that. So I'll okay. Um, this is a a cork stopper there, and um, hydrochloric acid again, and. chalk lumps, okay? So note the volume of gas made every So as you as the as this as CO two gas is created in this reaction, and you pull the syringe back, okay, you note the volume of gas made every thirty seconds, okay, or you can collect it over water, which is a different experiment to set up. a different set of apparatus. Okay. So when you measure, if you take readings, if you take readings of the volume of this, that actually, as the gas comes in, this actually gets pushed out. You don't pull it, it gets pushed. Gas accumulates and gradually fills up and this gradually comes out. Every 30 seconds you measure the position this has moved along. And then you plot them in a table. Time, volume, CO2 centimeters cubed. Okay, I'll just do a rough sketch to, to give you an, an, an illustration. So zero, zero, thirty, twenty-eight. 60, uh, 39, 90, uh, 46, 120, 51, 150, uh, 55, 180, 58, 
270, 62, 300, which is 5 minutes, 62. Okay, this is in seconds. So when you then graph. Okay, so when you do that, you get, again, just a rough sketch. I mentioned about doing rough sketches. You can also use graph paper, or you can use a ruler, and I'll demonstrate that in a minute, using the scales to make a very precise, accurate scale on each axis. A ruler is a very good way that you can do very nice graphs with a ruler if you just carefully measure out the scales with the centimetre and millimetre scale on both axes. You can do very accurate graphs. A graph paper is good as well. But you cannot do an accurate graph just like this. This is just a sketch. So when you measure this, volume is CO2. Again, the volume starts off going very fast. But then gradually... slows um, volume CO2 centimeters cube okay so you get one So at this point, uh, roughly there, you get no CO2 you get, you get no CO2 produced. Um, at this point, the lines are less are less steep. As CO2 is not made as quickly. Okay, and at this point is the highest gradient, which equals the fastest. reaction. So here CO2 is made very rapidly. Okay, so at the beginning CO2 is made very fast, the volume goes up very quickly, but the volume being made gradually gets smaller and it, the amount the volume is made more slowly, it takes long to get up and eventually the volume hardly changes and eventually there's no increase in volume. So you get a graph that's a curve. So these are ways to measure reaction rate as I said at the beginning. Um, next you have The steepness of the lines um, so just so you can see that clearly okay Um, steepness of this slope. I will try in the future not to let batteries run out and to let memory sets become full so my, my videos don't get broken up. Um, I will try to learn not to do that. Steepness of slope equals the rate of Is the rate of reaction okay 
at start the rate of reaction is high because the concentration is the greatest because the concentration is the greatest okay This applies to any reaction, for any reaction. Okay. And the rate gradually slows as the concentration drop, drops. Okay. Um, when it comes to drawing graphs, okay, graph paper is good for a rough or a rough sketch is good as I've been showing you um, or a or a ruler is very good one of my students when I asked her to use a ruler didn't realize what it meant and so she she didn't she did a rough sketch I um I then showed her how to do it you can make a very accurate graph of the ruler. Okay, just a quick example of rough sketches. You've got coronavirus, okay? Coronavirus growth, this is not exactly reaction rate, but it's showing growth, growth of microorganisms on the graph. They follow this pattern. It's a sigmoidal curve, starts off very slowly and then gradually increases, becomes exponential, and then when everybody's infected it gradually slows. Okay? This is a sigmoidal graph. Because it's an S shape. Okay? This is actually this is a virus growth curve. Okay, starts up very slowly, and number of people being affected, number of organisms affected, becomes twice as big every unit of time, so doubles, 1, then 2, then 4, then 8, then 16, then 32, then 64, 128, 256, 1,512, 1,024, 5, and it gradually 10,000, and then Twenty or thousand, forty or thousand, eighty or thousand, hundred fifty thousand, two hundred forty thousand, half a million, a million, two million, four million, ten, eight million, ten million, sixteen million. Gradually doubles. So starts off slowly. More and more people get infected. Then becomes exponential. But then as the population is filled up with infections, so yeah, um, it runs out of victims, people to infect. So it slows. Okay, this is the basic pattern, although it's repeated, it repeats in different ways, but this is a microbiological bacteria virus growth curve, okay? This is what we're experiencing in the current pandemic, this pattern, although we're trying to make this flatten with the lockdowns, okay? The lockdowns are trying to do this, sort of. Okay, it says lockdown effect. But without lockdowns, it'd be like this. It'd be much 
you divert, it would have affected it very much more quickly. Okay, so that's basically a, a sketch of a curve, okay? No growth curve, this is time here. And um, number, uh, number of victims, and um, population size, okay? So population size is small, and as time goes on, population size gets bigger, that's infected, bigger and bigger, and then it slows down, okay? Population size is very large, that's the whole population. So that's population size versus time, okay? Sigmoidal curves. Um, right, uh, so rulers are very good. Um, this is also coincidentally the same shape of curve as oxygen binds hemoglobin. It starts off um, oxygen binds to hemoglobin in red blood cells, starts off like this, and then gradually speeds up and then slows down. It's the same sigmoidal shape as oxygen binding, but I'm not going to explain to you why that is the case. It's complicated. Um, so, right, to plot. Uh, ruler, I'm going to demonstrate a graph for you. Um, so, an example of sketching graph, if you have, um, you can be very accurate with the graph. You, you take a ruler, Okay, and you you mark the centimeter points very carefully. I I can't lean over the paper too much because of the camera lighting, but I'm doing as careful well as I can. Ideally, I'd lean over and do it much more precisely. And then and then you um. So I've marked off, I would normally lean over and write, do more, much more carefully, make sure I'm marking, but as you can see, this is one centimeter, two centimeter, three centimeter, four centimeter, okay? So, so you've got the x-axis, the y-axis, and each centimeter is very carefully marked off. So if, if you were to plot a um, data table like this, if you were to plot our time centimeters, okay, against, maybe make this cube because it's dealing with volume, so you have zero, zero, one, two, two, two is three, three is three point five. So two, two, one half, four, three point seven five. So each unit of time it drops by half. The centimeter amount it 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 first goes up by two, then one, then a half, then a quarter. So it halves each time. So at zero is zero. At one second of time, it's um, at one second of time it's two centimeters. At two seconds of time it's three centimeters. At three seconds of time it's three and a half centimeters.